Hey everyone, this is Jim Rowan back with the AI 360 podcast. I've got Ed Van Buren here with me. Ed heads up our AI in the government and public sector practice. Ed, thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here, Jim. Awesome. So Ed, a lot going on in AI this year. A lot of big activities happening. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit about first, like what your role is in Deloitte, and then a little bit about your perspectives on what's happening from an AI perspective in government and public sector. Sure thing. Uh, Jim, my role in Deloitte around AI is to help our teams across our federal, state, local, and higher ed spaces um, use AI with our clients more effectively. That involves working directly with clients, working directly with our tech alliance partners, uh, coordinating our investments, and helping develop our workforce. So there, there are a lot of moving parts associated with that, and it's been an exciting couple of years in this space. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. I think we've done some great things with our clients uh, to help them adopt AI. Um, in the government space lately, we've seen a lot of changes um, around AI. Before we were spending a lot of time trying to explain uh, to our clients you know, the values and the benefits of AI, uh, right now there's a top-down push uh, to deploy automation and AI-powered solutions to help uh, reduce the cost of government services. So that's been a big push uh, in the last couple of months. Yeah, clearly a ton going on. I mean, we see that Cindy in the commercial side too. And what's interesting, I think, for folks to listen in is that Ed and I kind of play this role together in the sense of connecting the dots between what we see commercial in the public sector, what are the benefits, what use cases can we apply across those two areas and learn from each other. And Ed, maybe like we could get into a little bit of detail from your perspective on some of the interesting use cases you're seeing emerge from the use of AI in the government and public sector space. Uh, well, Jim, in in our government space, we've got kind of a mix of you know traditional government front office functions, um, okay. as well as back office functions that are much more like what we would see in the commercial enterprises, right? So on the front office side of things, you have everything from health and human services, benefits, deployment. You've got regulation and oversight, law enforcement, defense, national security, intelligence, um, public health, and you know all of those classic government services for which AI can really make a big difference and, and already has been. And then on the back office side, we have all of the things like finance and human resources, uh, and we've got a lot of administrative processes that are very similar um, to what we see, you know, in the commercial space, things like IT management, uh, IT service delivery, and things like that. So, um, I think there's a tremendous opportunity right now to take a lot of those capabilities straight from, you know, the commercial, um, we'll say, best practices playbook, you know, and deploy them uh, straight into the back office functions. And then on the front office functions, uh, there are a lot of common processes where we do see similar things going on. So. The idea of you know a customer service interaction um, is very analogous to a citizen requesting some sort of service uh, from a government agency and all of the processes associated with that. So we can leverage those kinds of capabilities, things like intelligent chatbots, for instance, uh, to make those interactions much more efficient for everyone involved. That's great, Ed. And I think one of the interesting things, too, we've got this conversation about is, like, what are the barriers for people trying to adopt AI? And what's sort of slowing down this kind of scaling of AI where we, you see in our state of Gen AI report, we talk about organizations and what they're able to scale into production. Only about 30% of these POCs got to production last year. Um, are you seeing, like, similar challenges around data, regulatory situations, maybe the strategy or purpose, connection to mission, being some of the same challenges you see from a GPS perspective? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, the data connecting to the AI solutions, you know, is is a very long pole in the tent. Um, and organizations in, in the government space are spending a lot of time and energy trying to make sure their data is accessible and clean. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's definitely a, an element. I think there's a overall sort of workforce, leadership and governance dimension that that's slowing things down, uh, where there's a desire to make sure that everything is just right before it gets deployed. Um, not everybody is as aggressive about wanting to use AI. You know, I think the government industries um, have very important and sensitive missions, and the leaders really want to make sure before they deploy something that it's not going to cause a problem. You know, and and that's a very admirable um, 
you know, aspiration. At the same time, it does tend to slow down um, adopting new and innovative technologies. So that's a that's an element. And then the last one is really around the overall security and risk posture. So um, you know, government data, it's citizen data, it's national security information, it's very sensitive uh, information, and uh, the agencies want to make sure that they're safeguarding this information. Um, a lot of the technologies that have rolled out over the last couple of years didn't start in secure formats. So it's taken time for the tech industry to migrate those capabilities into government secure cloud platforms. Uh, so, so that's an element. And then government agencies also are looking to deploy those solutions, you know, in their uh, on-premise based environments. And, and that's um, taken time, you know, to make sure that they have the right components and elements. So blending all of that together, you know, creates some obstacles, but I think government leaders are working their way through those. And, and we're starting to see more and more solutions get into production, bringing AI, you know, to the United States. That's awesome, Ed. And maybe one thing is hard for us to like walk down the street and not even talk about uh, agentic AI, a hot topic everywhere. Is there a piece of advice you'd give government and public sector leaders around what to think about AI agents, agentic AI, that whole space? There is. Um, you know, when we when we think about agentic AI, we think of autonomous agents that are going forth and and doing all of these things with no human interaction and oversight and. I don't think that's how we should think about it. We should mm -hmm. think about AI agents as partners, you know, partners for the government workforce, partners for the government leaders. And as you deploy these solutions, you can make choices about how empowered that partner is going to be. Um, for very sensitive things, there should be lots of oversight and lots of interaction between the human and the machine. Um, for things that become well understood and are, um, you know, lower risk, we can allow the AI agent to have more autonomy and pick up more of that workload uh, with less oversight. I think that as you deploy these solutions, you've got to think those things through and blend it out so that you get a solution that gets you the benefit of agentic AI, but at, at the same time manages the risk of the deployment. I love it. That's super helpful. Well, Ed, thanks so much for the time today. I really appreciate your insights on what's going on from AI and government public sector perspective. Thanks, Jim. Glad to be here. Take care. Mm -hmm. Take care.